Hi everybody, Expat Aviator here. I'm a real world uh, private pilot and I actually went solo in a Cessna 152 or Cessna 152 as I say now that I live in America. And uh, I still fly a 152 today actually. So I'm here at Wellsbourne in flying fest and scenery. And I thought I'd take you on a quick circuit and show you the way that I was taught to fly and the way I actually fly. This will be as minimal uh, waffle as I can, so let's get straight to it. Alright, we're inside uh, Golf Golf Papa, that's the aircraft I soloed in. And I've got the aircraft set up the way that I, it would normally be left in my experience. The checklist I'm using is from AFE, as a UK company called Airplan Flight Equipment, and I've had this checklist since 1998. So, my internal checks, the seat is adjusted and locked, the hatches and harnesses we'll assume is secure, parking brake is on, radios should all be off, 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 instruments legible, serviceable, reading within limits, the flying controls will check for full and free movement, and normally you'd be looking out the window and verifying these as well, but given this is a sim and it's kind of awkward, I'm not going to do that today. Trim should be full and free movement. Again, takes a long time, but just make sure it's returned to the takeoff position. Cabin air controls, you want everything to be off, off, and off here too. If there's a fire, the last thing you want is it ingesting it into the aircraft. Mixture, fully rich. Throttle friction, well, we can't really set that in the sim, but we do check the throttle, full travel. Move it slowly because there is a boost pump attached to it which works even if the engine's not running. Set it a quarter open. Carb heat, you're looking for full and free movement back to cold. Now then, master switch on. You're looking for the low volt light. All the circuit breakers should be in, not popped. Um, I've never known one to actually pop, but uh, still check them. Uh, the fuel cock. Normally this doesn't ever get switched off, so I'm used to seeing it in this on position all the time. The beacon, I tend to leave the beacon switch on always, because if that master is on, I want the beacon to be on. And the primer, on a regular day, not too cold, uh, hasn't run before today, I would give it two primers, maybe three. Uh, and then we'll do the lookout and start the engine. Now the parking brakes on the Cessna 152 are particularly poor, so normally I would have my toes on the tow brakes and I'd be holding it on the tow brakes. And when we start there are two things we're looking for, people outside that we don't want to chop up, and also that this oil pressure comes up within 30 seconds, 60 seconds on a very cold day, and I'm talking sub-freezing, otherwise uh, we're looking for 30 seconds. So let's go to both. Have one more look around. We'll ignore this guy. Call clear prop. Okay, the engine's caught. Oil pressure is in the green. And we want to come back to a, between 1000 and 1200 is, is pretty normal. Okay, after start. <clears throat> Oil pressure, we've checked, is rising to green. Starter warning light is not fitted to this aircraft. The ammeter is indeed charging and the light is out. Suction's here in the green. Magneto check. Some people will check the magnetos here just for rough running. Um, I tend not to. Flaps are up. Flight instruments. Well, let's set this to zero, which would be QFE, which will give us height above the field. Everything else. Um, check the compass. That's all fine. There really isn't anything else to set. So this is the point where I would turn the radios on so that the intercom and things work. On, on, and uh, I tend to put the transponder straight to out. Uh, these days there really is no reason why not to. Taking off on runway 18, which is to the south, so that means it's going to be a right turn onto the taxiway. Taxi light comes on and we'll do our checks in turns. Okay, so as we taxi forward, as we turn to the right, 
the compass should be increasing, the heading indicator increasing, the ball flies left and the attitude indicator stays level. We'll just drive through that annoying bus and we'll do the same check to the left. So decreasing, decreasing, ball flying to the right and the attitude indicator is level. At some point you'd also check the brakes and they seem good. And now let's carry on our taxi out to runway 18. One of the things Wellsbourne does have on their website is a, a pretty good diagram of the noise abatement. The villages around Wellsbourne, like most of them in the UK, are especially sensitive to noise pollution. Uh, where I fly now in America, uh, it's not a big deal. People are spaced out. They seem to appreciate that, hey, there's an airfield next to the house I bought. Uh, they don't get as worried about it. Um, but particularly the villages of Hampton, Lucy and Loxley, I know if you fly over those, they call up the airfield and lodge a complaint almost straight away. I'm going to ignore them to some degree because I want to show you what a normal uh, circuit or pattern would look like. So let's slow down and we'll do our checks here. You try and do your checks as interwind as you possibly can. So let's hold short of that line. We'll turn as much as we can into wind. Uh, I don't have differential braking, so this is tricky. And we'll pop the parking brake back on. As I say, I, I wouldn't use that parking brake real world. I would use my tow brakes. All right, the power checks. We are roughly into wind for engine cooling. The parking brake is on, 1200 is set. Uh, up to 1700, you don't need to be precise, just pretty close will do. Okay, it's close enough. Let's check the carb heat. You're looking for a drop. Uh, the max drop should be 175, but really you're just looking that it's working, and it is. And it should go back to what it was before. Check the mags. Max drop should be 125. We've got a drop there of what, 70, 80? Back to both, make sure it restores. Then go to the other mag, to the right mag. Uh, you're also looking that it, it should be about the same with a difference of no more than 50. So that looks good. Ammeter is charging, suction in the green. Engine temperatures and pressures are within limits. I can tell you from experience that engine temperature does not come up that quickly in the real world. And then check the idle. If you pull the throttle back too quickly to that idle there, you'll usually get a backfire. So always as smooth as you can with a throttle. Okay, now pre takeoff checks. Trimmer set for takeoff. Throttle friction, can't do it in the sim, but it would be tight or as you like it. Mixture fully rich. Uh, magnetos are on both and the master is on. Pito is not going to be required. The primer will assume is locked. Fuel we know to be on and full. Flaps are not required for this normal takeoff. You would use them for a soft field. Instruments, there is honestly nothing to set for VFR flight in, the, in a 152 at this stage. Hatches and harnesses will assume are secure. Carb heats confirm cold. And one more check that the controls are, are full and free movement. And then last of all, I say lights, camera action. So lights is landing light on, strobes on. Let's put the nav lights on as well. And the transponder is in out. Okay, one more thing that I do before I take off is a little takeoff brief to myself. So this will be a normal takeoff, rotate around 55, we'll climb at 65, and 65 will be our approach speed today. Uh, there's no crosswind that we know of. If we have any problems on the takeoff roll, like weird noises, fires, bangs, or strangeness, we'll just stop on the runway. If we get into the air, we'll make a judgement as to whether we can land back on the runway. Uh, otherwise, anything below a thousand feet, we're going to land straight ahead. We're not going to turn back to the airfield because it just doesn't work. All right, so let's get going. 
parking brakes off. It's kind of hard in the sim to look whether there's anybody on approach. Alright, onto the runway. Check the compass, it's saying runway 18. The heading indicator says 18. Put your heels on the floor away from the brakes. Slowly, in about three seconds, come up to full power. You're looking that the RPM is where you expect. RPM's good. Temperatures and pressures can't quite see, but you check that they're in the green. Check that the airspeed's coming alive. Very twitchy because I don't have my control. Uh, set up very well in the sim. There's 55. Oh, a lot of out of trim. Alright, and climbing up at 65. Let's try and sort that trim out. Alright, runway heading 65 knots. I have to take off checks our gear up. Um, obviously, can't in this aircraft, but I say it anyway, just in case I am flying something that's retractable. Flaps are up. Engine T's and P's, let's have a peek. Yep, they're looking good. Radio, nothing to change. Altimeters, nothing to change. And let's leave the landing light on for the pattern work. Climbing up until we get to at least 500 feet before making that turn is, is pretty typical. Trying to maintain about 65 knots, but, you know, again, you don't have to be precise. Now, Loxley's down there somewhere. I think that's it, but we'll, we'll assume by the time we turn that we'll be past it. All right. No more than a rate one turn looking at the turn coordinator. No more than rate one in a climb. Keeping that 65 knots and we're going to roll out on a west heading. We want to level off at 1000 feet, which tends to happen just as you reach the heading, which is always typical, makes it extra fun. All right, so there's west. 100 foot to go. At about 50 feet to go, we'll start to lower the nose. Keep that power on full. Let the aircraft accelerate to about 90 knots and then come back to 2200 ish RPM and trim for level flight. Now this is about the time you'd normally turn downwind. There's Stratford on Avon on, in front of us there. Bit more power, got a little bit slow. Well, I, I heard the RPMs were a little bit low actually. Trying to stay at a thousand feet, turning onto a north heading now. Okay, there we go, there's north, and the airfield's just over there. So now we're on the downwind, we would normally make a, a before landing checklist, which for me, I remember in my mind now, everything is from memory. I don't pull up a checklist once I'm in the air, at least not in a small aircraft like this. So it's uh, brakes are off, undercarriage is down, mixture is fully rich, mags are on both, masters on, fuels on and sufficient for a go around. The engine T's and P's are good. Carb heat uh, is not required at this stage and with no reason to suspect carb ice. Hatches and harnesses are secure and the landing light is still on. So that's my pre-landing checklist. In America they use something called GUMPS, which um, I've not really learned because I'm so used to this way of doing things. So let's take a look. Right, there's the end of the runway and we've also got this Loxley, uh, sorry, the Hampton Lucy village. So what we'll do is we'll fly this pattern the way they would fly it in the UK which tends to be um, you fly further downwind and you don't start descending until you're on the base leg. In America you start descending at the end of the downwind leg. So that was a little bit of a change for me. So I think that there is Hampton uh, Lucy. We'll turn around that. Okay, so turn on to east. And you know I've not touched the throttle yet. Also try not to touch anything like flaps while you're in a turn, generally just not a good idea. So 
So there's east. Throttle back now to about 1500 RPM. The RPM's out of the green band. So pull that car heat out. And try and keep the altitude now. Where's the runway? There it is. Keep that altitude, let the speed come back to about 65 and trim within the white arc so we can take the first stage of flaps. There's 65, so now using pitch, follow it down and we should be on about uh, about time to roll out. It's kind of hard to see in the sim, it's much easier in real world. So now my throttle is controlling my descent rate and... Okay, we overshot slightly. Throttle's controlling my descent rate pitch is controlling my speed so I'm using the elevator to keep that 65 knots all the time. Second stage of flaps so there's 65 so I'm starting to pitch down now I'm looking at the picture out the window Now normally you would come in with two white lights in a GA aircraft um, you're above the three degree glide slope but that's where you want to be if I had an engine failure now and I was one white one red I'd never make that runway so I like to come in a little bit high and and glide more than dragging it in with power, which is much more dangerous. All right, so we're, we're committed. We're going to make the field, so we go full flaps, keeping 60 to 65 now. Trying to keep those numbers in the same point on the runway. 60 is just fine for this stage of the approach. And now... As we come to the flare, eyes to the end of the runway, close the throttle and just hold it off for as long as you can. It's much easier to do real world than it is in this sim. But there we go, and we're down. Use the rudder to keep straight, super twitchy on my joystick. Okay, and we're down. And normally you wouldn't touch anything uh, until you're off the runway. There have been too many incidents where people have tried to clean up the aircraft by bringing flaps up or messing with other controls and have actually put the gear up. And there's plenty of videos on YouTube of people doing that. So let's vacate here onto the cross runway. And um, I'm not going to taxi all the way back in. I'm just going to show you how I would normally shut the aircraft down. And we'll get this video wrapped up. So come to a complete stop off the runway. Parking brake on, back to 1200 RPM. Now's a good time to bring those flaps up, carb heat in, landing light comes off, strobe comes off, the nav lights can come off, transponder can go to off. That would be my after landing checks. Uh, and then last of all, it is radios off, 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 and as simple as throttle closed, mixture closed, Wait for that prop to stop. And keys to off. And master switch off. So there you go guys, I hope that was useful. Uh, that's the way I fly a circuit in a 152, the way I was trained to do it in the UK. If you have any questions, leave them in the uh, in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.